I have I have some clips. So what if we play uh, the first part here? I broke it up into two just uh, to make it more manageable. So um, we'll play this first part, and then you know, Rania, Asa, you can react to it, and then we'll close the loop. This is um, the BBC ran this documentary, which you can describe more. Uh, but I think it was, is the Labour Party anti-Semitic? Or That was the, I think that was pretty much the title of the That's documentary. It. And so this is the clip from the Labour Files Part 2 that gets into an element of it that was fabricated, entirely fabricated. In 2016, Labour Party member Helen Marx is interviewed by party officials as part of an investigation into her local constituency Labour Party. We'd been accused of anti-Semitism by a member of the CLP who was also a councillor. I felt it was a totally outrageous um, accusation. What he was doing was equating criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism. My father lost all his family during the Holocaust. His parents were rounded up and killed in the, either in the Warsaw Ghetto or taken off to a concentration camp. Rika Bird attends the interview as a witness, what's called a silent friend. Both women are Jewish. Three years later, Panorama, the BBC's longest running current affairs programme, broadcast a damning film. Do you think Mr Corbyn is anti-Semitic? I've been asked that a number of times, mm. and you can tell from my polls that it's still a question I struggle with. Labour's internal communications reveal the anger of party officials at what they regard as a betrayal of the BBC's duty of impartiality. The BBC has used its market monopoly and might as a public broadcaster to run a biased political agenda. It's not a program about anti-Semitism. It's a hit piece. A description of Marks and Bird's disciplinary interview features in the documentary. The interview is conducted by Ben Westerman, a party official who is Jewish. Ben Westerman received dozens of complaints. While interviewing one member, he was confronted with the very anti-Semitism he'd been investigating. And we finished the interview. The person got up to leave the room and then turned back to me and said, where are you from? And I said, what do you mean, where am I from? And she said, I asked you, where are you from? And I said, I'm not prepared to discuss this. And they said, are you from Israel? What can you say to that? You are assumed to be in cahoots with, with the Israeli government. It's this obsession with the fact that, that just spills over all, all the time into anti-Semitism. So, so that's the first part. And then, uh, should I just go ahead and play where we see that that's a, just a load of shit that Ben Westerman <laughs> was beating the reporters? Rika Bird speaks to Westerman at the end of the interview. When he says, um, where are you from? Are you from Israel? That's an absolute lie. I didn't say that. With Westerman's permission, the two women record the interview. The, the, the full recording shows what actually did happen. Curious, because I haven't been in the Labour Party very long, and I've certainly never been to anything like this informal interview before. Um, and it, so I'm just curious about um, like, what branch are you in? I don't think that's relevant. Oh, OK. I, I hope that's OK. I'm sorry, I, just, I don't think where I'm from is, is at all relevant to, to the investigation. I did ask Westerman, what branch are you from? Um, meaning what branch of the Labour Party, because it was a Labour Party internal investigation. The word Israel never came into the exchange between me and Westerman. At the time, I, I could hardly believe it, but I actually feel very angry about it now because I feel it's so trivialising what is a really important issue. 
Oh my god, that's so absurd. So he just blatantly lied. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because this is an aspect of the film again, which isn't entirely new, but it's great that Al Jazeera have brought it out because even at the time, I mean, I wrote two articles about the Panorama documentary um, at the time they came out, um, kind of quick response pieces. And at the time, it was it was obvious to me as someone who'd been reporting it, reporting on the issue for, um, you know, three or four years by that point, um, that it was um, a crock of shit. Like, we can swear on this program, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's encouraged. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, yeah, I mean, it was an absolute crock of shit because, you know, it, it was clear, like, for one thing, I mean, even before we get to this issue of what Ben Westerman um, alleged happened, um, the whole impetus of it was, it was clear. Like, the BBC portrays itself, and John Ware tries to portray himself as this, you know, balanced, um, impartial um, uh, news service and um, and it actually has a legal obligation, supposedly, to be to be that. Um, um, but it was clear that it had a political agenda from the start, just from who the people talking on it were. So, mm -hmm. like the very first face that appeared, I mean, I remember it just sitting down to watch it. The very first face that appeared on screen was a former um, political officer at the Israeli embassy. Her name was Ella Rose. She was a um, a director of the Jewish labor movement, which is this um, uh, pro-Israel group within the Labour Party. Um, through the early period of the Jeremy Corbyn leadership, she had been uh, recruited by other Israel lobbyists out of the Israeli embassy to lead the Jewish labor movement, to give it this kind of, um, she was quite young at the time, you know, in a, I think in her early 20s at the time, early to mid 20s at the time. And, um, you know, to give it this kind of youthful, appearance you know because um the whole, one of the whole headlines about jeremy corbyn was that he's attracting the youth so they were saying well actually there's problems with the youth and with young jews especially and young jewish women especially so they were trying to kind of manufacture this crisis and time after time after time the people the talking heads on this program who were portrayed on this panorama bbc panorama program they were portrayed as like um essentially brave whistleblowers who were daring to speak out against anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. None of them were named, you know, very few of them uh, uh, were named. One of them named herself, Izzy Lenga, but even her, even she did not reveal that she um, was an officer, one of the leaders of the Jewish Labour Movement. Ella Rose was uh, also from the Jewish Labour Movement, as I've said. Um, and so it was clear this program had an agenda all along. So this issue of the the what happened with Ben Westerman, this um, disciplinary officer in the Labour Party, um, was really interesting because um, at the you know it, 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 I suspected it to be completely untrue because it, it seemed you know he didn't name anybody at the time. It, it just seemed very clear to me that it just sounded very fishy. Didn't didn't add up to me. And then soon after. Uh, uh, a great journalist called uh, Joshua Fennell. Um, I hope that's how I hope that's how you pronounce your second name, Josh. Um, he wrote an article about it for the Canary, and he spent several weeks investigating it and um, talking to people, interviewing people. Um, he he interviewed um, Helen Marks and Rika Bird at the time, um, and they provided him with a. Um, audio recording, the, the same audio recording we see in that Al Jazeera clip. And he, you know, revealed at the time that this was, this completely undermines what Ben Westerman was saying. Um, and I asked him for, uh, so this was back in 2019, he really exposed it at the time. And I asked him, um, it was either earlier this year or last year, I asked Josh, you know, did anyone from the BBC ever deny your revelations? Did um, Ben Westerman ever respond? And he said, no, nope, they never respond. The BBC sent a general response where they, um, they, they said they stood by their journalism, but there was nothing on the specifics, you know, that basically Ben Westerman was just completely lying and just invented this story wholesale. Or it, he could, I mean, if you listen to the audio clip, that he sounds like he's sort of convincing himself that he's heard that, right? She doesn't say, she doesn't even say the word from in that audio clip, right? She just said, <laughs> I wonder which branch you're with. 
and he immediately gets defensive and says, oh, well, I don't think where I'm from is relevant. So it's like he's kind of imagining she said something about Israel, sort of convincing that he's that she said something about Israel, you know, and then and even if she had said something about Israel, it's only because he's Jewish. Well, even that idea, you know, I mean, I <laughs> I don't think I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't think Westerman is a particularly um, particularly known to be a Jewish name. I don't think there was any they would have had any particular indication that he was a Jewish person. Um so, you know, this this whole thing was a crock of shit from the start, basically. And, you know, the fact that it was even taken seriously just shows you what a pathetic mess the British media is. Yeah. 